Hey YouTube, this is AT4 Rocket going over the GNG Raider. Uh, all the other GNG combat machines, but uh, stock it comes rear wired to a crane stock, and it comes with a free floating rail system. Now this isn't the original rail system. This is actually the Evike RAS 2 edition M4. Um, so this is, I believe, a GNP RAS 2. I could be wrong. It might be the Echo 1, but I don't think the Echo 1 has the markings. Um, anyway, all this external stuff does not come with the gun when you buy it from Evike as their special RAS 2 or as um, the regular GNG Raider. The regular GNG Raider will come with a color matching rail system. So if, it's, if you buy the tan version, you'll get a tan polymer free float rail and it will be a monolithic top rail. They're available in this style, kind of, and the XL, which uh, basically has the monolithic top rail, which goes beyond the front sight post up to about here, but it is interrupted by the front sight post. Side rails will be uninterrupted, and I believe the bottom rail will be, but don't quote me on the bottom rail. Um, anyway, it comes with a very nice, thin, Tango Down style pistol grip. It's extremely comfortable, much nicer than just a standard A2 pistol grip. It's one of my favorite pistol grips, actually. Crane stock is decent for a, a stock crane stock, no pun intended. I just put an Arabic translation sheet on there. Basically, what you can do is just find the picture on Google Images, print it out, and cut it. It's going to be on a, twi on a tilted angle, but when you print it out and just cut it out, it's all good, man. Anyway, I also put a QR code sticker on there and my call sign number. Uh, so, this gun has GNG's flexor blowback and their one piece plastic cop up unit. Um, now, the nice thing about this gun is that. Uh, to take it down, all you have to do is pop out this front pin. You don't have to pop out the back pin, just the front pin. And the front pin you can pop out with no tools, which is a really nice thing. So just push the upper off, and it'll all come out. Now, what's going to happen is this spring and your charging handle are inevitably going to come off because they're actually attached to the top of the gearbox shell. So, keep those safe. You will need them. I'll show you how to put it back on. Now, right here, this metal piece, this actually releases the uh, anti-reversal latch. So, it decompresses the spring So for storage. Now, right here, if you see that little hole, it's not really a hole, it's more of a circle. What that is, for those of you who don't know, it's called radiusing. And what that does, essentially, is it's one of the most stress-relieving things you can do. It, uh, cause usually cracks only happen at 90 degree angles. So if you radius it and just put that little radiusing there, that actually, chances are, will stop your gearbox shell from cracking. Now, they only do this on the bottom. They did it on both sides, so that's a good thing. Now, you might want to radius the top part too, which you can just do with a small, round, cylindrical file. Um, and that's just something that will prolong the life of your gun. Uh, internally, the gun has G&G's uh, combat machine gearbox. It's got their 8mm brass bushings. I mean, they're decent. They could be replaced. The motor, it's their really cheap gray motor. I would replace that right off the bat with something like an AMP high torque or a Matrix Magnum, something thereof. Um, just so you can get much better performance. This motor really is not worth keeping. Everything in here, though, if you use it as is, it will last for quite a long while now even though this has the pneumatic blowback system which actually takes a little bit of the air 
out to push this faux bolt back. Now, it's not mechanical, meaning that it's not attached to the piston. So basically what happens is there's a little spring that's self-contained in here, and there's a tiny hole on the top of the cylinder right about here. So when the piston comes forward and pushes all the air out of the air nozzle, some of that air will also go up into here and push this faux bolt back and the spring inside of here will send it home. Now that's a good thing because it doesn't add any stress to the gearbox and it actually acts somewhat as an air brake making the gearbox shell last longer. What this will do is detract from your muzzle velocity and it will not allow you to have as long of an inner barrel. So if you're going to use a 509 millimeter inner barrel, you will need to get a full cylinder. This is a full cylinder, but it has this tiny hole up front. So that will wreak havoc on your compression if it's uh, a longer barrel. Now with just your standard M4 length barrel, this will go quite a ways. Um, my range on this in completely stock setup was around 200 feet at uh, airsoft game last Sunday and bone stock with just a number 14 o-ring and some minor compression work I had this thing actually at plus or minus one compression from the factory which is amazing compression so this is one of my favorite stock AEGs the externals are rock solid the internals are solid, comes from the factory with a 6.04 millimeter precision inner barrel. Now it is aluminum, so it will uh, start pitting faster than say a steel Prometheus barrel or a PDI barrel, but really for a stock barrel, it's rather decent. Um, okay, anyway, now for reassembly, see this little hook it's going to go on the left side of the blowback unit. There's two little holes. I don't know why there's one on the right side, but it, the spring will attach to the part on the left side right here. So anyway, that's how that attaches. Then what you're going to do, you're going to want your dust cover closed, otherwise it will not go on, and your pin to be out. It locks in. Do not remove that pin all the way. I'm going to annotate that in the video. So, excuse me for this one second, but hold on. Okay, now you just slide in the gearbox and lower receiver onto the upper receiver or vice versa. So, kind of really hard to do one-handed it is really hard to do one-handed so oh my gosh Okay, now we've got the upper on the lower. So really, all you do is just put it back on and pop that front pin back in and you're good to go. So that's pretty much it on the G&G Raider series. Thanks for watching YouTube. Uh, as always, please comment, uh, like, and subscribe, this vi subscribe to my videos helps out a lot. Thanks for watching.